Greetings students and welcome to the week three asynchronous lesson for Physics B. I am your instructor, Mr. Sharan, as always, and today we're going to be taking on a two-part lesson. Um, so this first portion is part one and next week I will be posting part two. Uh, this is on circuits and circuit design. So we're going to be looking at circuitry. Now we're going to be using an online simulator whose links, if you're watching this video, whose links you can find in the same discussion, or sorry, course announcement post. We'll also be using a lab sheet, which I have up on the screen right now here on the, the right, uh, which is also, you can find a link to that you can download and copy. Now you won't need to turn in this lab sheet at all. Um, this is for you to take notes and to help guide you in the usage of the simulator. Uh, but this is, a, I would say, an invaluable little worksheet for you to, to work on to help you kind of build your understanding of this material. Now, in these labs, we're not going to get through as much the whole sheet. Uh, today, we're going to basically be focused on part one, where we're going to be looking at circuits in series, um, specifically DC circuits, so direct current circuits. So these are ones that have a power supply, such as a battery, that is, or a direct line generation that is producing a current, not a alternating current. Um, so we're going to uh, take some time to kind of pr practice around with this and do the first half of this. Um, next week, though, we will be taking a look more at parallel circuits and, if we can, a little bit of compound circuits. Um, we probably won't get the chance to really get, cover the AC circuits or the capacitor circuits in, the, in these two days. So if you wish to continue those, you uh, I'm, I highly recommend. There's also another great conclusion questions as well, um, Many, some of which I've used in the exit tickets for this week and next week's assignment. So you can use those as well as review. All right. So let me actually, before we get too far, let's take a... Uh, more detailed look at this. Um, some important information you have here at the top is the following formulas, which we'll be using frequently throughout today's activity. Uh, v equals IR, which is voltage, so that's your sort of, not quite your potential energy, but your, your sort of, almost like gravitational field. The voltage within a circuit is, could think, be thought of uh, similar to the strength of gravity on the surface of a planet. The, the higher the voltage, the more charge and particles can be pushed through wire. Uh, there's the actual current itself, which is how quickly and rapidly those, those charges are moving through the wire, and then the resistance. How much is the natural materials of the wire resisting the flow of those electrons? We then have equations for calculating total resistance. So in circuits, we often have multiple parts that each contribute to the overall resistance of the circuit. In a series, this is a pretty much a linear equation of add one to the next to the next. Same thing for voltage as well. We see though, and this is something we'll start covering tomorrow, next week, sorry, not tomorrow, next week. Um, parallel circuits, however, we have a much different way of, of calculation. So we'll talk about that in a little detail. So without any further ado, let's get to this. All right, so. I'm going to zoom in here a little too, if I if I may, to kind of make this a little easier to read. And we're going to focus in now. Here in the simulator, there's a couple things you want to make sure that your voltmeter and your ammeter are turned on. Um, also, make sure your schematics are turned on. Now, we can look at this as if it were lifelike, and that's fine. In fact, the lifelike version will show us the flow of electrons through the materials. However, since you are going to frequently have to see circuit designs, we're going to use the circuit elements so you know what they look like. All right, so in our first part one, first part one, that's very redundant, in, our, in the part one section, we've got, we're going to be building a simple circuit using a battery, a light, and a single loop. So let's begin. So I have a battery element. I got two wires. I have, oh, sorry, bulb. I said battery. 
bulb. And um, oh, I'm going to need DC voltage. So there's a battery there. All right, I connect, and there we go. Now, to let me get this. Do this is sort of smaller scale, so it's a little easier to read. Oh, actually, let's do the game analog. All right, so I'm going to take. This is my voltmeter, and the way this works is that it measures the potentiality between the two electrodes. So you basically touch it in any two points along the circuit and it's going to tell you the voltage difference, the potential, basically the potential energy difference between them. And the higher the difference, the more this. So think of this difference, you know, in that I gave the gravity example. This is also kind of like the higher your voltage, the steeper the hill things will roll down, the more it'll sort of push things along. Now, 8.99 volts is what we have. Um, so we are not getting a perfect 9, so we're getting 8.99 volts. But, oops, actually, I'm going to just keep, they've already got the units for me, so I just need to put this in. So this is where we're going to start. So that's going to be our first value. Next thing they do is they ask us to, what is the current? Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can use a... We could calculate it, or, since we don't know exact resistances, um, we can use the ammeter. Now, the ammeter, unlike the, the voltmeter, must be built into the circuit to work. So it is, has to be connected to the circuit for us to get a proper event. And there we go. So... Basically, the way the hand meter works is it's specifically designed to measure how much force is going into the electrons. Uh, usually has a needle of some sort inside of it that deflects as the electrons flow through it. And the, the greater the deflection, the higher the, the current. So it's built in this way. Um, this also would be add some additional a, a aspect of resistance in the real world, but in the simulator it won't. Alright, so I've got 0 0.90 amps. So, finally, I'm going to need to now calculate my resistance in ohms. And I'm going to need to use the V equals IR equation. So, 8.99 volts, 9, 0 0.9 amps, unknown resistance. So, I'm going to take the 8.99 and divide it by 9.0. Now... Using my calculator, um, actually it was 8.999, I should say, divided by 0 0.90, okay. and here is our answer. Now, I'm, I'm going to round this. Um, I have three significant, four significant figures here, and I have two over here. So... I'm really going to round this down. I really want to get this down to two. Um, any rounding of this, though, specifically here, is going to cause a cascade effect. So I'm going to round this out and get... Ten. Alright, so my ohms are ten. Now, I can test that by just taking a look at... We can actually measure... Sure enough, 0 ohms, 0 ohms, 10 ohms. So so the resistance, these wires are considered to be perfect conductors, um, which is not true, normally does not occur naturally. You don't usually have natural 100% perfect conductors or superconductors. Um, we have almost all conductive material has some sort of resistance to it, but in this case, the only resistance is coming from the bulb, and, and that resistance is what is producing the light and the heat that the bulb gives off. The resistance, in essence, causes the electrons within this filament to jump in levels as it absorbs energy from the flowing current, 
and as they drop back down to more stable levels, they emit infrared and um, photon, other photon visible and infrared light, and probably some ultraviolet as well on the higher spectrum, but basically producing black body radiation, as it were. Now, um, next thing they're asking us to do is set both of the voltmeter's probes on the same side of the light. What is the voltage? All right, so I'm going to remove this piece. dynamic. Hmm. All right, let's rebuild my... For some reason, the circuit decided to stop working. I don't know why. It shouldn't have. Okay, now, so the question has been, what happens when... Know why the simulator's having it? Hmm. I wonder if I change the power supply. Anyway, we'll see. This should be lit up. I don't know why it's not, but we should see. In fact, I might. What I need to do is me need to reset all again. Yes. Remove this meter. And we'll try this again. Okay, so battery, wire, wire, and you know I'm even gonna try. Let's just I will, just to test out. Um, oops. Battery, oh, nine volt battery. So this is also like a nine volt battery as well, which is my standard. Okay, I don't know why it's not going. The circuit is perfectly designed. It's I don't know why this is. But let's take a look real quick, though, at answer the question. So, if they're on the same side of the element, voltage is zero. Okay, so what we see here, as we take a look at this, you know, we're saying, okay, so what's the voltage here? And we've got an answer of zero volts. So the question now is why? Why would we have suddenly zero volts if we put the voltmeter on the same side. Uh, the answer to this is pretty just pretty straightforward. We're looking at potential differences or drops in the potential or increases in the potential from one side of the electrode to the other. On this side there's no drop in potential. For all intents and purposes, you know, we have a drop of potential here but not here. This entire piece of wire, until it reaches the light bulb, can all be considered to be part of the positive terminal of the battery. So it's as if there's no difference in it as if it were all the same thing still. It's only when I place it here that I get a change because now the potential here and the potential here are different. But here and here, we get a voltage of zero because there's no potential difference between the two. Uh, once again, in essence, the flow of electrons it treats this as if it were all one thing. Now, we want to reverse the battery. What, let's see what happens. So I can reverse. And this should just change the flow of electrons in the opposite direction. Uh, it should also change the voltage as well. As the direction changes. Now, we're the next circuit we're going to build, so let's reset all. all right, oop, that's not reset. So the next circuit we're planning to build is one with a bulb, a, a battery, and three lights in series. All right, so setting lights in series. So for a light to be in a series, they have to connect 
one end to the other. So the, it's in essence they make a chain, and each one is a link in the chain, and the end of one is connected to the other end of another, and they're so so they're forming this chain, so we can we'll be able to follow the flow of electrons through this chain. Now, we established that these are 10 ohms. Hmm. Change the wire resistivity as well. All right, let's see. Let's try the non-contact ammeter real quick. Am I getting a current? All right, I'm having some issues with this, so I am going to close and restart it. So just one moment <laughs> as I restart my. Don't know why it doesn't usually have this issue. Um, got you guys back together and fixed so hopefully this won't we won't have the same issue we ran into before but here we go all right so uh, is this the same one yeah that's fine okay so i need oops i guess i can't do my schematic view i must be using the other All right, so let's do three. I need three light bulbs. I need to connect them in series, so that means if we call these positive, negative, so negative to positive. And negative to positive, so... All right, so we need to put my battery in there. Okay, so a couple things we should notice almost immediately is that we have the same voltage. So if I look, the, the voltage of my battery hasn't changed. But the voltage across each of the bulbs definitely has. Where it was 8.99 in the first one, we have 3 volts here, 3 volts here, 3 volts here, but take a look here, 9 volts here. So, all of these together as acting as if it's one bulb with 3 times the, the resistance but there's still the 9 volt difference from the beginning of one to the other end of the other. In essence, the electrons, as you can see, are flowing through in that fashion. So let's take a look. So what is the voltage drops for each of the circuits? Let's fill that in. We got 3 volts, 3 volts, 3 volts, 9 volts. Now, we're at this point want to know what the currents are as well, because we have ultimately want to be able to confirm what we know about the resistances. All right, so let's take a look at between battery and light one. So I'm going to have to turn off my voltmeter, put in my ammeter. And I'm going to use the, uh, the regular ammeter, so we want to, I'm going to have to hook it in. All right, so between. Battery one, so between battery and the light, I've got it a 0.3 amps. Between lights one and two, so we'll move 
remove the element, put this back. Um, so between light one and two, split the junction. Is super weird. This has not been wanting to work well at all today. All right, let's put a new bulb in place. Let's see if that fixes it. No, it doesn't. Hmm. All right, let's try this again. Oops, three bulbs. One, two, three, four. Add my ammeter in there. All right, and remember, in this case, hmm. Uh, there we go. Okay, so point three amps again. So. Three. Finally, four between lights two and three. And then I'm going to need to split this junction here. Zero point three. All right, now. Using Ohm's Law, we would need to find the resistance of the lights for light 1 and light 2. So, for light 1, so the resistance to light 1, um, we've got for light 1, between 1 and 2, battery of 2, 1 and 2. So, we can use that point 3, and, oops, I almost forgot. in the battery itself so so let's see we're gonna have um, so in each of these cases we have a let's see if we can record this real quick so they do also want us to see if we can find the current in the battery itself um, and I would suspect as we were most likely going to find it's going to be a little trickier to find out. So what we're going to need to do is basically see what's the current coming into the battery, what's the current going out of the battery, and we can guesstimate from there. So 0.3 uh, is probably guessed. All right, so we've got another 0.3. Okay, so how do we calculate this out? All right, so we're going to do our first one. Um, so we've got 3.3. So we can see our resistance for light one, and we're going to, let me clear this real quick. Um, so 3 divided by 0.3, 10. So same for them, it's going to be 10. 10, so light 3, same thing, 10. So we've got basically resistance of 10, as in before, but just added together to make a total resistance of 30. So if we think about it against the battery, so we have, so the question that came up was, what is the current in the battery? Well, we can calculate that. Knowing that the resistances are add up to be, so the total resistance of the circuit is 30 ohms. So we're, we're using the VIR where we know 
V and we know R, but we want to know I. So, 9 volt battery divided by 30 ohms, 0.3 as well. So, there's our 0.3 amps that we measured. So, we can see that even if we can't directly measure the current inside the battery, we can either measure the current on either side of the battery, and we can calculate it using our Ohm's Law. All right, so are all the lights the same brightness? The answer to this, we should say, is yes. So, and we can tell here by the number of little white lines they have with it. So, yes. All right, now we have um, covered pretty much this first part pretty well. We've got at least the data and the calculations aspect of it. Um, now they're asking, move a light from the circuit and reclose the circuit. Okay, so. What happens to the brightness of the other lights? All right, so you can count by the number of rays that they have now increased right here. So the number of rays surrounding this has increased, which means their brightness has increased as well. For a series circuit, as lights with resistance are added, the voltage does what? So, and in a series of lights, as the resistance is added, the current does what? Okay, so I think for these questions, we should answer it a little differently than this. Um, in this series, we've got here, and we're, we're saying what's happening to the current. Well, the current, the more I add, because here, let's just take a look. Point four five. So, taking out one of the light bulbs from the circuit, increase the circuit current through the circuit. See what happens if I remove another. We can measure it, but you can see already that this is even higher as well. So, what does. So, we've got for a series of circuit lights with resistance, as lights with resistance are added, what happens to the voltage? Um, across each one, the voltage drops. We definitely saw the voltage go down, um, and it pretty much was divided by the number of bulbs. And then for current, we see the current goes down as well. So as you add, as you add components to a series circuit um, with with increasing, which increases the resistance, you get. A reduction of the the voltage across each part of that circuit so each part of that circuit is now experiencing a, a lower voltage which we can see in the form of slower moving particles through this in fact one of the things they've added is to add so we want to add to the first battery um, so let's see what happens so let's just keep adding some batteries or bulbs all right so we'd had three before. Let's see what happens when I do four. All right. Okay, so further down. So now my amperage has gone down 0.22. So from 0.3 to 0.22. So once again, I've fractionally divided it out some more now um, so currents dropped let's take a look at the voltages so they do want us to take a look at voltages voltage dropped again to 2.25 so we had nine now let's take a look at let's just play around with a calculator 9 divided by 4, 2.25. Okay, so in this case, 
for each additional resistor, as long as the resistor is an equal resistance, we add, we've been dividing our voltage by those by that amount. Okay, so let's see what else. Now they ask you, create a wire path in your circuit that bypasses all the lights. This is called a short, short, short circuit. What happens, oh, sorry, I forgot to add my resistor first. Let me add my resistor. Uh, there we go, resistor. All right, and sure enough, even more. Now, this is also the same resistance as the bulb, so it didn't matter that it's a different type of element. If it has the same level of resistance, it pretty much produced the same effect. So you can see this again. Nine, oop, clear. Nine divided by five. 1.8. Okay, now, um, they do ask for one last step, which is to create a pyre path in your circuit that bypasses all the lights. So, all right, now, take a look at what happens. So, what happens to the battery in the short circuit? It catches fire. Okay, if you take a look at it, notice its voltage says 8.173 volts. Um, at this point, it cannot properly measure voltage. Uh, in fact, if we look at, so 8.173, um, and if we take a look at it, the, the amperage has jumped up an amazing amount. Um, it's gone from 0.18 with the four elements to, oops, hooks it up to the wrong part, to, oh, 7,000. I wonder where that happened. Ah, notice. <laughs> so, inex unexpected effect. The Literally, the thing controlling how slow or fast the amperage is, is how long the wire is at this point. The longer the wire, the greater the amperage, the, the smaller the amperage, the shorter, the higher. But it's nearly, it's burning the out. So... In a case like this, this would be, could form a certain circuit, the battery could catch fire, overheat due to its internal resistance, explode if it's a chemical battery. So these can be actually a pretty dangerous situation. So this is why we try always to avoid short circuits. All right, so I'm gonna end there today. Um, so we've covered the part one. We're gonna take on part two and part three next week. Um, going a little faster since we'll have prepped with this, but we'll finish there today. Um, once again, there is for these an exit ticket, which you'll find in the exact same, uh, you're going to find in the exact same location that you found this video. The exit ticket is mandatory. It's a short little quiz covering some of the material that we've covered today. Um, you may take this exit ticket as many times as you wish. I will be posting the best scores. I update grades for your synchronous sessions on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So other than that, thanks for taking the time to watch the video and taking the time to work on this. I hope that um, you will go beyond just the material that I'm going to cover in these two two-day videos, and uh, this week's and next week's video, I should say, and uh, really explore this and use this tool to help you out. All right. Thanks, and everybody have a nice rest of your day.